Good evening. I'm back again to discuss um, and continue my series on uh, baits and techniques, lure selection, etc. Um, tonight I'm talking about soft plastics and specifically in the soft plastics, my craw, imitite, craw imitation type baits. Um, so with that being said, <clears throat> I've got a lot of different baits that I categorize as a craw. Um, it's kind of general, it's a general category, um, but I have so many different colors and um, so many different styles that I feel fall within that <clears throat> category, I guess, um, that I'm calling craws, um, that I really feel like you know, when you're looking at a tackle box and you have all these options, or you're at a Bass Pro Shops or um, like Academy and you have all these ideas in front of you about what you could select, it would help for someone to explain very clearly and in a concise way where you would use each one. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. Once again, you can see that there's looks like 12 different categories that I've built here. Uh, within just just my craw box that I have labeled craws, you can see how I have it. Um, so there's there's a lot of different options. Um, so I'm gonna go through each one of them and make it very clear, and, you know, quickly, fairly quickly, but make it very clear as to why I would select it, what time of year, you know, what the situation would be, um, what the water clarity is like. I'm gonna give the the full um, the full disclosure on, you know what my opinion is on selecting these so that it kind of gives you a good starting point when you're going shopping or you know maybe baits that you already have etc you want to know what to throw so um, anyway so let's just start at the top so this this crawl here um, it's red with green pumpkin uh, super straightforward this is like a uh, rage crawl you know it's got these big flapping hands on here these big craws um, that sort of thing is um, Excuse me there. That sort of thing I would use whenever fish are pretty active. You know, those those rage craws with the big hands on there, the big flaps, moves a lot of water. Um, it has a big presence in the water. Um, so it would either be when they're when they're pretty active or when I'm in, uh, you know, like dirty water and I want to make a bigger, um, just I wanna make a bigger presence for the bait. So um, if I'm throwing this bait in, in clearer water, like I said, the emphasis would be more on the activity of the fish. If I'm throwing it in dirty water, it would be kind of, you know, it would just help, um, you know, the fish find it. So, but that reddish, greenish color, you know, a lot of times in the late winter, early spring, uh, crawfish get to be that color. Um, that's just a general rule, but it depends a lot on um, the bottom composition and the specific body of water that you're in, what the nutrients are in the water. There's a lot of different factors that play a role in that in that formula, so that's just a guideline. But anyway, moving on to the next one quickly, um, it's the uh, Strike King Rage Craw, same thing, but in black and blue. Um, you know that other first craw I might have thrown in like a medium stain water. This is a darker stain of water. I'd throw this black and blue a lot to show up a little bit better. Um, once again, it's got the wide flapping craws. It helps the fish find it. Um, easier, but definitely that black and blue I would emphasize on an area where you know it's really it's a good solid stain to the water. It's not just a kind of an average water clarity. Um, so that's the difference between those two. Um, moving moving on a little bit here, um, same style craw again, rage craw, but I like uh, the orange and green. So there's times during the year when you see crawfish and they're orange and green. A lot of times they show up really green. Um, especially, you know, more bright and stuff in the summertime. Um, and they even get kind of a little bit of a translucent hue to them. Um, of course, it depends on what type of water you're in. Once again, there's all always the caveat there. But, um, you know, it's got a green under, or an orange underside. A lot of times on clay banks, they take on an orange type coloration. These crawfish do. Um, you know, it makes sense that they're going to kind of try to blend in with their surroundings, but there's times when blending in isn't possible. And like I said, it's, it's based on, you know, water chemistry, um, seasonal, you know, activity, things that are going on. Um, but, um, you know, really I just pay attention to the color of crawfish. I look at them thoroughly and just make my decision on what bait I'm going to throw. But this is a good, you know, like a summer type, uh, you know, 
color or like the clay bank type situation that definitely um, applies there um, I have a brush hog it's not really you know it's kind of a creature bait more than it is like a craw bait but you know um, saying that you know it doesn't really give it uh, I'm not really giving you the full the full story here. Um, the appendages on it move, you know, and, and it's it's a bottom moving bait. So if this is on the bottom and those appendages are moving, it could mimic a crawfish. But with how ultra clear it is and everything, and you know the swimminess, uh, I, I don't know how else to explain it other than that. But the swimminess of these little appendages here, more than just kind of the you know like this. Uh, I think that make that makes more of a tail, and I think it looks more like a sunfish, possibly. But personally, that's what I think it's mimicking. But you know, if it's on a Carolina rig, maybe it's more apt to look like a sunfish when it's drifting at a higher level in the water column. When it's on the bottom, uh, maybe it's more mimicking, you know, craw type bait. So that's kind of an intermediate type description, and that's why it's in this box and not in another box. Um, but you know, good color. You can never go wrong, wrong with watermelon red. Um, it's just excellent, especially in clear water applications. Um, this is a speed craw right here. I love this. I love this so much. I think the action on this is less than the action on this. Um, I definitely think it is. Uh, you know, this is kind of like an intermediate. Um, you know, whereas I don't want to, if I if I don't want to be too loud with my presentation, I'll go right in the middle and throw something like this. The green pumpkin is the standard. You know, I can catch a fish on any lake in the country with a green pumpkin. That's in general. If you don't know what color the crawfish are at the time of the year, a safe bet is to just throw green pumpkin. You know, um, I said one of my I said in one of my earlier videos that um, you know knowing the exact color pattern color scheme of the crawfish could be you know really beneficial and and kind of vault you up to that you know next level where you're catching bigger fish and and more fish. But this is a good starting point intermediate type action works in all water clarities for the most part unless it's heavily heavily stained or something um, good choice there this is like a Denny Brower craw I still like that rage rage craw type family the craws are a little bit I don't know I don't know how you can explain them they're like a little bit fuller than the other ones obviously you can kind of take this apart you know and and you, you don't have to leave that thing you can pull this apart and boom you got that they're more free but uh, you know, as far as comparing it to the rage crawl, the hands are a little bit different. Maybe it gives a different action. Also, um, maybe it's more of a paddle movement where it's displacing water, almost like a spoon or something. Um, I don't know if that totally makes sense, but I'm trying to explain it in a way that's clear and, and as clear as possible. Whereas this is kind of like a wavy, this is more, it's got more of a circular profile and it's kind of like a paddle. Um, it, I'm sure it just has a slightly different action. It's actually the first time that I just put it in my box. I thought it looked good, so I wanted to try it. But um, anyway, another thing, like I said, that's the watermelon, watermelon red. You know, really good for clear water. It has these little uh, ridges on the side. I don't know what that does. I don't know if that's you know advantageous or not. I'm sure it's a good bait if it's a Denny bait. You know, uh, I'm sure it's pretty good. Um, but uh, this bait here. Is another one of those that I feel like in the late winter, early spring, that reddish type color with the brown could be excellent. The, the, this is called a river bug. It's a Bass Pro Shops uh, uh, bait. And um, it's this is the small one. It's like almost like the smally beaver. Um, there's like a sweet beaver. There's a smally beaver. It's like that, very close to that. Um, but I like, I, I get more bites on the smaller profile beaver style bait than I would get on the full style like this one right here. Um, uh, if you look at the two, there's quite a big difference in size and it will catch big fish. But the, the, the beauty of it is, is that you get more bites and in a situation where there's a lot of pressure on like the small lake that I fish, Lake Dunlap, um, you know, that I fish a lot, a lot of the good places are pounded because that's where they live. So if you come in there with something a little smaller, a little more subtle, that's still big enough to catch big fish, um, you know, this could be great. But once again, it's got that red uh, color scheme, red and, red and green pumpkin, um, late, late, late winter, early spring. It's a great choice. Um, but once I, like, once again, it goes back to the, um, you know, 
the seasonal situation, water chemistry, uh, just the entire ecosystem. It really depends on what's going on, uh, you know, with the life cycle, the crawfish and everything. But um, this is kind of a really dead action. All these beaver style baits like this, whether it's this one for the clear water or this one for, you know, mimicking that red brown color. Um, this is kind of, you can either leave it together or you could pull it apart, you know, and it's separate appendages, but this is more of a dead style, um, you know, bait where it's more, it's a gliding, it glides a lot, but it doesn't necessarily give off that real flapping type movement that a rage crawl will give off. Um, but, uh, well, that's an excellent, excellent choice. I think it's the right size. It, it just, I can't say enough about how good this, this is. Um, <clears throat> Of course, you got like this this black and red. Um, it's it's like a uh, it's like one of these right here. Same same type of thing, like a brush hog, but it's you know same basic platform that it's built around, same style, but it's the black and red. It's got two extra little appendage things on the side. Um, you know, it's uh, basically the same bait, like a little brush hog, like I said. But this smoky black color is good for you know. Uh, dark water. So if you compared the two and you just said, hey, you know, these are both um, brush hog style baits, this one obviously you'd want to throw in clear water, this one you'd want to throw in dirty water. This shows up better in dirty water, this shows up not as good in dirty water. Um, it looks more natural in clean water. It doesn't, this isn't about natural right here, this is more about showing up and creating a profile that the fish can key in on. Um, that one, here's another one of those. Uh, excuse me here, um, river bugs, this one, that one was cut in, cut a little bit, I use it as a trailer on my jigs, um, but um, here's another one of them, basically this is the smally beaver looking one, um, the small size, uh, but black and blue, same thing, you know, if I feel like, um, you know, that's not really quite dark enough for, for some reason, even though it has that two-tone coloration and it has the contrast there, it should show up well in dirty water, but if for some reason it doesn't, or they're just keyed in on black, black and blue, you know, this is a great, a great one as well. Um, also I have that color <clears throat> in the, uh, which is actually in the same compartment, but I have this little, uh, menace scrub here. This is another one that's really good. You know, you can pull it apart, you can leave it together. Um, at the base, whatever you want to do, but, you know, sometimes I throw this just by itself, you know, flipping it. Sometimes I'll put it as a trailer. Sometimes I'll throw it on a light Carolina rig. You can do a lot with this bait. It's super versatile. It's got a pretty stout body section so that you can get a good hook bite in there. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's does a lot of things. It's small, it's compact. It gets going to get you a lot of bites. It slips well in and out of the cover because of the, uh, elongated profile that it has and kind of its sleek design really good really good bait also in that black and blue color family um, is this uh, you know crawl right here the speed crawl once again if we compare both of these these are identical baits except for the color pattern this one's gonna work well in almost any water clarity because it's green pumpkin this one's gonna be especially a, a, you know shine brightly um, in terms of performance with water that's off-colored dirty um, that black and blue just you know there's something about it it just shows up really well and it gets you bites whenever you know the fish can't get a good look at the bait they're having a hard time finding it throw that in there that's great also uh, I may have pointed out I like the compact uh, body profile on this bait I think it just once and once again another one of those that really slips in and out of cover really well um, and it's, you know, it's got about a medium type action in it. It's not that real wide flappiness, but it's not that dead action of that beaver trailer. It's right in between. And um, as far as the activity, you know, there's times during the winter or, you know, cold fronts or whatever when they're really slow. And that's when I'll throw that dead action one. Or when they're fired up and their metabolism is super high and they're feeding, you can get away with throwing that rage crawl, you know. Um, but uh, I noticed throughout the year that there's particular seasons when they're more active. You know, um, of course, like I said, their metabolism being high, that's like a summertime trait. Um, you know, their metabolism speeds up and they have to eat more and they burn through calories faster. So, um, you know, I use a real active thing, active type trailer. But you'll also notice that everything's swimming around a lot more. Um, you know, during the summer, obviously there's periods of the day whenever they're more subdued and they're kind of congregated tighter to cover. Uh, they're not as spread out and the strike window shrinks, but they're still on a metabolism scale. They're still active as far as that's concerned. Um, they got to eat a lot. Um, so, but the last and final one, you know, is just this, uh, once again, just this kind of, 
uh, beaver type bait comparing both both of these in that watermelon type color um, so that's you know kind of uh, merging the two different concepts that I had related about size and color and and kind of taking two baits that are in the same color family for a clear water and um, you know looking at them from a difference in size now you could throw this one a lot more get some bites during a tournament or whatever put your five fish in the boat have a decent limit going and be confident that you can go fish around for bigger fish and you could pick up this uh, excuse me you could pick up this and the difference is is that <clears throat> what I think my theory is is that you throw those bigger baits and you catch bigger you get bigger bites because it's almost like if you have a uh, if you have a bunch of red and blue marbles in a bag and um, you go through them and you sift through them and everything you can uh, increase your probability and it would be equal to um, some sort of you know it's almost like a I don't know how to explain it but you're 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 swinging the probability in in your favor um, you know, if you have red and blue marbles and the red one's desirable, that's the equivalent to the big fish. And there's a whole bunch of red and blue marbles in there, but there's only like 10 red ones and a whole bunch of blue ones. You step up to this big bait right here, and you're pulling out a lot of those blue ones, and you're getting access to the red ones. Because the blue ones, you know, which would be the little fish, don't get a good chance, you know, to get it. They're not going to usually go after a really big bite. Uh, Bait. There are exceptions where you catch them on a big crankbait or something or a big worm, you know, it's a little fish, but for the most part, you weed out um, and you're selecting for, um, you know, you weed out the little ones and you're selecting for the big ones by stepping it up. So, once again, just to finalize things, this one you throw in clear water, this one you throw in clear water. This one's about more bites. Also, if there's more fishing pressure or the barometric pressure is higher and things are tougher, this is the one. If they're eating, you know, pretty heavily, or you're trying to catch a big fish, you know, and you might have to even slow, you might have to slow down on this one if you're planning on fishing for big fish in a post frontal situation or when it's tough. That's the thing. You may have to just slow down and give them time to pick it up. But, um, you know, these two play their own individual specified roles, and they're both, they could be both really good and producers. Um, so that kind of goes through everything. Only other thing that I have in here that's kind of a little strange to have in here, but I do, is this. I use this as a trailer as well. Um, this is like a really big paddle action type. You know, it's moving its hands everywhere. It's all over the map, and that's pretty much strictly a summertime thing that I'm going to throw that unless it's, you know, really stained. But if it's really stained, I'm probably not going to be throwing watermelon or pumpkin, you know, for the most part. Um, I'll probably go to those darker colors, but... Um, you know, that's more of a summertime thing. It's it's kind of in line with the activity of the sunfish that are swimming around and everything that's going on in the lake um, as far as, you know, that everything being heightened metabolically. That's that's really the ticket for that. Um, of course, they make smaller ones and everything, but that one I would put on like the back of a swim jig or, um, you know, this as a trailer put on the back of a swim jig or uh, even a spinnerbait maybe, but that's just going to really have a a lot of action and there's a lot of lot going on there so um you know i think <clears throat> on some of these videos i'd recommend going over them multiple times and, and the more that you can um absorb the information the more you hear it the more you absorb every time i watch you know a video i may absorb 80 percent of the video if i'm tired i may absorb 50 percent of the video or you know 25 percent of the video but i pay attention to how receptive I am to information, and I re rewatch and rewatching until I burn it into my mind, and it and it completely makes sense, and it's natural for me to make these decisions when I'm in the boat. And I look at the water clarity, I think about the seasons and everything. Those decisions get easier to make, and then when you catch fish, it's reinforced and it builds a stronger connection. So it's important to really, you know, I recommend watching these videos multiple times. Um, so, but that's it. Um, I'm going to continue this series of videos. I'm going to next, you know, maybe talk about, you know, fishing worms, uh, talk about fishing spinner baits. I'm going to go through all my different categories of baits is my plan. Um, at the same time that I'm going to be doing uh, videos on, you know, fishing reports and map study and, uh, you know, also posting photos to my social media and, you know, all kinds of stuff. Of course, Bushwhacker Bait Company, uh, you know, facebook.com slash bush, bush Facebook, Facebook.com slash Bushwhacker Bait Co. Um, and then, of course, uh, Bushwhacker Bait Co. is on uh, is on Instagram. 
and uh, I'm just trying to build uh, all my social media and interlink it to where all this knowledge is accessible and uh, it helps out because I know that if I had something like this when I was younger, um, it, you know, it would have taken me from here to here. I mean, just ultra quickly without me having to do all the legwork. Um, so, so anyway, I don't know if my computer kind of blanked out or not, but uh, um, the screensaver came on. But anyway, uh, if I had that earlier on, I'd be much better off. You know, I have a, just kind of talking freely here, I have a 16-year-old student who I teach periodically, and um, he just kind of calls me when he wants to go fishing, but, um, you know, I think it's such a good resource for younger kids now to have YouTube and, and to have the things that I didn't have growing up. Um, you know, it's just everything's right there. It's just a matter of sitting down and sifting through the videos that are productive and the ones that aren't. And, you know, finding the channels that you can rely on for productive information rather than just, you know, clickbait type videos where you watch people catch big fish. It doesn't do anything for you. Um, I select videos based on you know what I think their merit is and, and the co the content and if it's going to be productive for me or not, and I take it extremely seriously. So um, that's just kind of my rant, but I think that that's uh, you know a great way of going about things. And and if you truly want to learn, um, you know you want to find the right sources and the ones that uh, the teachers that help you to learn best. Everybody's got their own style. So that being said watch this video again, watch the other ones multiple times, you know, watch my map study videos and uh, hope it helps out and we'll check in with you later. Thanks.